So, Alan, as a as a businessman yourself, could you could you see this as being this kind of design, this kind of um, opportunity in the future for for somebody who's interested in going into a business of building homes and, and or either renovating what pre-existing to but the, is there a bit, is there like a market for something like this? You mean to to push the green technologies? And yeah, and to try to build houses more to this style rather than what. Yeah, we're... I think I think houses are going to get smaller. I think they're going to get greener. I mean, I do. I I've watched people's reaction to this house since really when it was almost done in early July, and it's been incredibly strong. I mean, people, seventy percent of people want to go see the clean energy stuff before they see the house. But they love the house too. They love the modest size of it, the fine detailing, and uh, I think the you know I think the opportunity on Nantucket is to buy land while it's you know reasonably priced, and then as the market recovers, to build small, green, energy efficient houses. Mm -hmm. So have I think you had anybody say I want want one just like yours? I I have had a number of people say that. I've had a few nice compliments of people saying it's the nicest house they've ever been in on Nantucket. I, I and I had one guy who spent about two hours in one of the bedrooms saying, "This is the bedroom I want." And he kept bringing his wife in and saying, "This is the bedroom I want." So it's been very well received, which has been gratifying because it was a lot of time, effort, and energy, and it's fun to see people's reactions. What's your next project? Uh, we have a lot going on in uh, the vineyard, Bermuda, Hawaii, and yeah. we're going to use the solar thermal at a hotel in Martha's Vineyard to heat the pool mm -hmm. uh, much more efficient than oil. So, so that's your that's those are your resorts. Yep. Right. So now the goal is to take everything we've learned here and to apply it to other projects. It doesn't make world. sense even in the in, uh, economic hardship times that we're in right now to do something like that. Oh, it depends. Like every product, you yeah. know. I mean, it it depends who you're targeting. Right. And uh, if you're targeting the right customer and delivering right. a product that meets their needs at a reasonable price, you'll do fine. And if you're not, you're in trouble. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think um, you know you need to you need to be able to anticipate the dramatic shifts that will occur over the next few years, and they will be dramatic. And cost-wise, to do what you've done, I mean, it's not cheap. It's it's expensive. Yeah. Now there's a premium a to being on an island off an island. Yeah. And there's a premium still for a number of the products. Um, th and that was one of the reasons we wanted to experiment here rather than doing this on a much larger scale, which we will be doing. So, um, you know, I, what, if you're in New York City where there are skilled trade subs who understand green building, they'll say it's 3% more cost. And you could justify it in terms of your operations. Um, in an, you know, in an experiment like this, it's not necessarily economical. But that's part of what we were trying to learn. You know, FSC certified wood is a premium, but do you want to pay, is it worth it to pay a premium for wood where the workers got health coverage? Maybe you're saying, yeah, that's a good trade. I mean, it's like buying local on Nantucket. We pay a premium, but is it worth it to have the goods and services that we want employing people who are valuable members of the community? Yes, we can't order everything off the internet. We should be supporting local businesses. So were there premiums here? Yes. Are they justifiable in my mind? Yes, particularly in the, um, in the fact that this is an experiment and there's a lot to learn. Would you do anything different? I'd do a lot different. <laughs> is there one thing that comes to mind that you could say that you I, could? I think you would, you know, uh, two things I would say. One is I would go more slowly because these systems are complicated and you really need time to think about it, pick people's brain. I ran into an architect in California and said, oh my God, I'm doing this. Basically, an Esther Island equivalent. They spent four years planning before they put a shovel in the ground. And these were tech guys, so they wanted to get it all right. Um, so I think that, you know, I, I think taking your time, because it is complicated, there is no simple solution. We've been working on this for two years, and I'm still learning how solar works. I'm still learning the difference between volt and watt. And so I would say go slowly. And then there are a lot of little things. I mean, I love this sink. Um, you know, this is a great farmer sink. If I were to do it again, I would have a divided sink because as in the old days, when you're trying to conserve water, now I can solve it with a plastic tub, but ideally you want to have one side for washing and one side for rinsing. And you would, like being on a boat, you would use water much more efficiently. So that's the, you know, when you start to operate, you say, hmm, that would have been better. You don't have a dishwasher. We do have a dishwasher. <laughs> we, have an energy, we have an Energy Star dishwasher, which frankly okay. is more efficient than, yep, it's too bad, it's probably tight, but just, Oh, that's yeah. great. We do have a dishwasher. 
you know, everything my, was calculated. You know, do you want a dishwasher? Do you want a coffee pot? Do you want a toaster? Do you want a vacuum? Every energy draw was calculated. And then you need to calculate, okay, if you want all those goodies, here's how much solar and wind you need. When I did mine, I, I was thinking scalable. Mm -hmm. You know, if I got to pull my furnace out and replace it with something else, if I want to tap into my radiant heat, you know, with another source to heat. Yep. You got to think about that kind of stuff, right? Ab absolutely. And there's so many new things coming on the market all the time. You just, I, the I idea think is to heat that water up to get that house warm. And in 10 years, probably, you know, a fair amount of what you see would be replaced. You know, if it's plug and play, we'll yeah. take the old solar thermal out. I mean, we still have the debate about maybe the TAFEs did get it right. We think they did, actually, in terms of using evacuated tubes versus flat panel. Well, you know, at some point you pull those out and you put it in a different technology. So it'll, it'll evolve and you need, to, you know, there's a cost to that, but there's so many benefits. You know, I do, I do like being out here saying, wow, we have clean energy. You know, it's, I'm not, it's 100% clean. It's big.